here I am, I'm back doing another tutorial for you guys. A glow back. Uh, how do we get that foundation looking beautiful? Um, how do we use concealers? Uh, maybe a little bit of dewy on the cheeks. Um, we might even get to a bit of an eye. Uh, I want to start with a good uh, moisturizer. Feeling a bit dry, done loads of swimming, loads of sun. Um, I've got the Rescue Plus. Got to have a bit of Rescue Plus. And I've also started with a very new product I got in, is a Illuminator. Um, Illuminator is fantastic, very easy to use. Just massage and blend all over the face. And today we're going to do foundation. So I'm going to start with my foundation. I can see myself here. So I'm going to do a little foundation with a sponge. Okay, this is a Melly product. Uh, I wear it every day. I love it. Uh, these sort of products are buildable. So if you need to um, cover up any redness, you can do that by stippling over those little pink cheeks of mine. I like to work little bits of foundation at a time. If you've got too much, you've got nowhere to blend it to. So over the eyes as well, also gives you a nice coverage for eye makeup, maybe later on. Under the eyes. And you know that they used to say that the concealer goes on first. Well, I'm going to tell you that foundation goes on first. Because if you have the right foundation, generally you'll get most of the job done. Uh, I do like to use a bit of a dry sponge for a heavier application. And for a light application, I like to use a bit of a damp sponge. And damp doesn't mean wet at all, just damp. So wet it, squeeze it with a towel, just make sure the sponge is damp. And you'll get a little bit of a softer application. Now you can see this beautiful foundation, it gets sort of all my redness, which is nice. Because I am quite pink in the cheeks, this is where I'm using my stippling motion. So this is called stippling, for those who didn't know. <laughs> I'm sort of patting the foundation. And also as we're patting, we're kind of massaging a little bit and working it into the skin. But I can see that my redness is pretty much gone, which is fantastic. Now we're going to talk about concealers. For me, there's two types of concealers. There's like a very light, very luminous type of concealer. Some of them come in these really fab little pen ideas. So I like concealers to be basically put where they need to be put. So I'm not too dark under the eyes, but I'd like to have like a little bit of concealer to take a little bit of blue under the eye away. Um, when you put your concealer down, you put it only in the area that you want it. And then I like to use my fingers sometimes just to gently blend those areas together and highlight. Down here is nice as well. I can see like a little bit of redness still there. So if the foundation doesn't cover everything, this is where your concealer can do that little bit more of a job for you. You know also I find when you've got a really beautiful foundation on and a really nice concealer, your eyes start to look brighter immediately. And this area is all lovely and clean. You've got a nice little concealer, nice bit of foundation. So that's one. On the other side, I'm gonna do my other favorite concealer, which is the Clinique. Now, if you're a little bit darker, you've got a little bit more to cover. Clinique, the Smoothing Light Concealer is beautiful. Um, you need the tiniest amount. That's what I love about concealer. It should be just minimal. Um, with the Smoothing Light Concealer, um, it's got amazing coverage in very little product. So on this side, I'm going to do the Clinique. When you're at home, you look straight into the mirror. You'll see where the darkness is. You'll see where the dark areas are, or the little bit of pink still left. And just work those areas. You don't work the concealer through that whole section. And using your finger keeps it quite light. So if you're still finding that you're struggling getting that coverage under the eyes, you can use a brush. And when you're using cream products, I like to use a synthetic brush. So you can use your brush and you can just blend and gently pat in your concealer exactly where you need it. Nowhere else but the way you need it. Sometimes the eyelids can be a little bit dark. A few late nights. This obviously is much cleaner than this side. Um, the first product was the Elephas. It's very light, very sheer kind of concealer for the you know softer areas. The Clinique for that sort of bit more hardcore 
nighttime makeup as well. I think I bought a bit more coverage. So I always like to powder. Um, concealers do need setting. And if you don't set your concealer, you can get creasing, shifting of the makeup. You know, we're obviously if you're gonna put it on, make the effort to put it on, we want it to last all day. So I like loose powder, a little bit of loose powder on a powder puff and just very gently pressing into those areas where you've put that concealer. If you have got sort of oily skin or you find you get hot during the day and you need to powder your foundation, then you can do the same with your foundation. So nose, chin, forehead is a general place that you powder. Where there's movement, so here can cause a line, sometimes if we can move our foreheads <laughs> up the top there. So I've put a bit of foundation, I've put a bit of concealer over my eyelids. I like to powder here. That gives me a really nice blending combination. So when I put some eyeshadow or things on my eyes, they're not gonna grab and get caught. So even though I've got underneath my foundation, I've got that illuminator, um, by powdering I've got a bit more control over how much shine I have, but at least the highlights of my face are still gonna look nice and fresh and dewy. Because we're gonna keep this as an autumn makeup look, um, I've just, found a little blusher. Uh, the name of the blusher is Coral Queen. Sounds a bit like me. Even though I've got the pink cheeks, uh, but I've concealed it quite well, which means that I can go and get a bit of color and I can put it on my cheeks to give me that glow back, that rosiness. Uh, if you're doing color, I like to do the apples. So we do a little smile, we have a look at the apples and we can blend. And with a really beautiful brush, like this one, uh, it makes it very easy to put your blusher on. Let me have a look in the big mirror, right. So we smile, there we go. And autumn I think is all about mm, freshness. <laughs> now this blusher also has a little bit of shine in it too, uh, which is why I like to keep it high. Some people talk about blusher being like underneath here, but if you've got a shimmery blush, um, if it's through here, it's not gonna look very nice. Here is the best place to put your blusher. And sometimes you can do a little bit up higher near to the eye but just be careful of any fine lines and wrinkles uh, too much powder in these areas obviously going to only make the fine lines and wrinkles look worse or it's going to exacerbate the fine lines and wrinkles that was a big word oh. <laughs> what I'd do like an eye base right we've got a bit of foundation concealer eye base my favorite eye bases are either by Terry or Bobbi Brown so with the Bobbi Brown I'm just going to use my finger because it's easier I'm just going to put this eye base all the way over my lid area and what it does it just illuminates my eye immediately sometimes you can take up to the brow so there's my little eye base can you see how much it's cleaned my eyes up uh, sometimes when you have really clean eyes the eye colour starts to pop a little bit more. Uh, I'm using my little Stilla palette and I'm going to pick a colour called Affection. The eyes are the window to the soul. Right. I like to set the eye base with a similar colour so I can keep the light behind on the lid before I put any other colour in. But I'm going to just do a little bit of colour. This colour is a little bit darker than my eye base so I'm just going to use that mainly in the outer corner and see that beautiful blending brush. I'm going to blend and blend and blend all the way around to my little socket area. And depending on how you want to dramatize it, we can raise it up just a little bit to the outer corner. As we're getting a little bit older, everything starts to go down. So when we're blending, we're always blending up. We never want to blend down because we'll end up with our eyes looking like down. So we want to blend up. So around, round, up, blending over onto the brow bone. So my affection color again. Now, I think you noticed, I've already done my brows. I've got a new brow pencil in too. This is the Brunette, the Brow Styler by Curtis Collection. I've done my concealer. The next thing I want to do is I want to just change the shape of my eyes a little bit and just want to glam up my makeup just ever so slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this by Terry and this is Misty Rock. Really nice colour. It's a great way to get that under eye. So you've sort of having under eye makeup can make it look too heavy or too dark or close your eyes down but a product like this is really beautiful because when you put it underneath you blend it just a little bit it kind of gives you that finished look but without any darkness at all good old misty rock and because it's a little bit sort of pinkish again makes the green of my eyes really stand out
and because it's got a little bit of sparkle in it, it keeps it nice and bright. But now I've sort of got that finished look underneath without any darkness at all. I don't often wear mascara, but I'm doing it for my tutorials, so I'm going to do a little bit of mascara. Wait. Mascara is great. Wiggle, pull, wiggle, pull. Don't forget to add that extra little coat at the outer corner and that will give that little bit of a lift again. We're looking at lifting our makeup and our eyes up all the time. What do you think? I'm looking fresh, I'm looking rosy. Yeah. Okay? Now that I've put my mascara on, I feel like I need just a little bit more on my eyes. So I'm going to get my blending brush again, I'm going to get my Affirm, and I'm just... Affection. affection. And I'm just going to add a little bit more depth in that corner. Just a little bit more. And these brushes are so good, and because we did that bit of powdering, remember earlier, we've got that blending over the brow bone, becomes really simple. And I just have one more finishing touch. I haven't done any contouring because you know it's like a it's fresh you know I don't need to have that tan anymore. Um, the summer looks are all a bit bronzing. We haven't got any bronzer on today. So to complete our little autumn makeup look for this month is I'm just gonna add one of my very favorite lip glosses. Melly's Flirt Gloss. Um, it's called The Gloss by Melly and it's really quick easy application so just a little woo -woo. Rub together. I, this is like a really beautiful colour. This one is, I think anyone can put this colour on and look amazing. Um, and I think I like about this, it's not too sticky. Some glosses are like, you know, really sticky. This one's just perfect and long lasting, good pigment. Just to recap over a few things we talked about. Uh, we did a damp sponge, can give you a lighter and softer finish on your foundation. And a dry sponge can give you a heavier application. Stippling your sponge with your foundation can give you uh, more coverage in the areas you need it, me being the red cheeks. Um, we also talked about concealing. This is a really big one because most people think they have to conceal first. Always conceal after and only conceal where you need it. Look straight into the mirror and just pick out those bits that you want to conceal and only do that. Uh, and also I talked about blending, so the eyeshadows, so always blending up into the eye to get that lift into your eyes so uh, that's it for today um, hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something and feedback's always wonderful thank you um, so let me know what you'd like to see next time